A Little Princess by Frances Hodgson Burnett Retold by Mina Morris Chapter 4 Yachty If Sarah had been a different type of child, her life at Miss Minchin's school would not have been good for her. She was treated like a special guest, not just a normal girl. If she had been bossy or lazy, she could have turned out very badly. She might have become too proud or not learned anything. Miss Minchin didn't really like Sarah, but she acted nicely because Sarah was an important student. She knew if Sarah told her dad she was unhappy, he would take her away. Miss Minchin thought that if a child is always praised and allowed to do what she wants, she will like being there. So Sarah was always praised for her lessons, manners, being nice to other students, and for being generous. Everything she did was seen as great, but Sarah was smart and knew the truth about herself. She sometimes talked about this with her friend Ermengarde. Sarah would say, things happen by chance. I was lucky to like learning and to have a nice dad who could give me everything. Maybe I only seem nice because I have everything. I don't know if I'm really nice or not. If you never have problems, how can you tell? Lavinia doesn't have problems and she's mean, said Ermengarde. Sarah thought about it and then said, maybe it's because Lavinia is growing. She remembered hearing that Lavinia's growth was affecting her health and mood. Lavinia was jealous of Sarah. Before Sarah came, Lavinia was the most popular. She was the leader because she could be very unpleasant if others didn't follow her. She acted superior to the other students. She was pretty and used to be the best dressed until Sarah arrived with her fancy clothes. At first, Lavinia was upset that Sarah got attention, but it became clear that Sarah was also a leader, not by being mean, but by always being kind. Jessie, Lavinia's friend, once said, Sarah Crewe is never proud of herself, even though she could be. I might be a little proud if I had her things and got so much attention. It's awful how Miss Minchin shows her off when parents visit. Lavinia mocked Miss Minchin, imitating her voice. Dear Sarah must come and talk to Mrs Musgrave about India, she said. Dear Sarah must speak French to Lady Pitkin. Her accent is perfect. She didn't learn French at our school. It's not that amazing. She says she didn't really learn it. She just knew it because her dad always spoke it. And her dad being an officer in India isn't that special. Jessie replied slowly. Well, he's killed tigers. He killed the one that's now a skin in Sarah's room. That's why she likes it. She lays on it and pets it like it's a cat. She's always doing something weird, Lavinia said angrily. My mum says Sarah's way of pretending is silly. She thinks Sarah will grow up strange. Sarah was really not proud. She was kind and shared everything she had. The younger kids, who were usually pushed away by older students, were never made to cry by Sarah. 
She was like a caring older sister. When kids fell and hurt themselves, she helped them and comforted them. She never made them feel bad for being young. If you're four, you're four, Sarah once told Lavinia, who had been mean to a younger child. But you'll be five next year, and six after that. And, she said, looking seriously at Lavinia, it takes sixteen years to turn twenty. Lavinia replied, Wow, you can count. Indeed, sixteen plus four did make twenty, and twenty seemed very old to them. So, the younger kids loved Sarah. She even had tea parties for them in her room, using her special doll tea set with blue flowers. No one had seen such a real tea set for dolls before. After that, Sarah was seen as a hero by the youngest students. Lottie Leff really looked up to Sarah. Lottie's dad sent her to school because he didn't know what else to do with her after her mum died. Lottie had always been treated like a pet and was quite spoiled. She cried a lot especially when she couldn't have what she wanted or didn't want what was good for her. Her loud cries were often heard in the school. Lottie had learned that being a small girl who lost her mother meant people would pity her and give her attention. She probably heard adults talking about her after her mother died so she started using this to get what she wanted. One morning, Sarah heard Miss Minchin and Miss Amelia trying to stop Lottie from crying loudly. Lottie was crying so much that Miss Minchin had to shout to be heard. What is she crying for? Miss Minchin yelled. I don't have a mum, Lottie cried out. Oh, Lottie, Miss Amelia screamed. Please stop crying. But Lottie just cried louder. I don't have a mom. Miss Minchin got very angry and said Lottie should be punished. Lottie cried even more and Miss Amelia started to cry too. Miss Minchin was so upset she left the room angrily. Sarah, who had started being friends with Lottie, was in the hall and thought she might help. When Miss Minchin saw Sarah, she looked annoyed but tried to smile. Oh, Sarah, she said. Sarah explained, I heard Lottie and I thought maybe I could make her quiet. Can I try? If you can, you're clever, Miss Minchin replied sharply. Then she softened her tone, but you are clever at everything. Go ahead. Inside the room, Lottie was on the floor, screaming and kicking. Miss Amelia was trying everything to calm her down. Sarah approached them calmly. She wasn't sure what to do, but thought it was better not to say things in such a confused way. Miss Amelia, she said quietly, Miss Minchin said I can try to make her stop. May I? Miss Amelia looked desperate. Oh, can you? I don't know if I can, Sarah answered softly but I'll try. Miss Amelia got up, sighing heavily. Lottie kept kicking. If you leave the room, Sarah suggested, I'll stay with her. Oh, Sarah, Miss Amelia said, almost crying. She's the worst child we've had. I don't know if we can keep her. 
Miss Amelia was relieved to leave the room and let Sarah handle Lottie's tantrum. Sarah stood by Lottie, who was screaming and angry, and just looked at her quietly. Then she sat down beside her on the floor and waited. Usually when Lottie screamed, people tried to calm her down in different ways. But Sarah just sat there, not seeming to mind the noise which caught Lottie's attention. She stopped crying for a moment and looked at Sarah, noticing it was the girl who had all the nice things, like the doll Emily. I don't have a mom, Lottie said again, but not as loudly. Sarah kept looking at her calmly and said, Neither do I. This surprised Lottie so much that she stopped kicking and just stared at Sarah. A new idea can often distract a crying child. Lottie, who didn't like Miss Minchin or Miss Amelia much, was somewhat fond of Sarah. She asked, Where is she? Sarah thought for a moment. She believed her mum was in heaven, but still watched over her. She went to heaven, Sarah said. But I think she comes to see me sometimes. And your mum too. Maybe they're both watching us now. Maybe they're in this room. Lottie sat up and looked around. She was a pretty little girl with curly hair and big blue eyes. Sarah continued talking about a wonderful place she imagined, with fields of flowers, gentle winds, and people who were never tired. She described a beautiful city with walls of pearl and gold. Lottie listened, fascinated by the story. When Sarah finished, Lottie didn't want it to end. She said she wanted to go to that place because she didn't have a mom at the school. Sarah quickly cheered her up. I'll be your mom, she said. Let's pretend you're my little girl and Emily is your sister. Lottie smiled at this idea. Really? she asked. Yes, Sarah replied, getting up. Let's go tell Emily, and then I'll wash your face and brush your hair. Lottie happily went with Sarah, forgetting the whole reason she was upset was that she didn't want to get ready for lunch. From then on, Sarah became like an adopted mother to her. End of chapter 4 